Hi, and welcome to a finished object review video here at M1 Yarns and the Michigan Makers Podcast. I'm Jamie, the dyer behind M1 Yarns. You can find me everywhere on the internet at M1 Yarns, including Ravelry, Instagram, Facebook, and M1Yarns.com. In this video, I'm going to do a finished object review of my freshly finished sorrel, which is a pattern by Woolen Pine. And I have a lot to say about this. So the yarn, let's begin with the yarn. The yarn is um, Annie Blatt, um, which is a French Angora yarn. I bought a whole sealed box of 10 balls um, from a local yarn store here in Metro Detroit who has like a consignment section where you can sell your stash at a deep, deeply discounted rate. And if you go back to a video from, let's see, this is currently April of 2022. I want to say it was in February. I did a video with my friend Gwen, who is by Gwen's Design on Instagram. We had a yarny shopping day together where we went to this yarn shop and um, I purchased this yarn during that trip. And in the video that we did together, we talked about our yarn haul. This was one of them. I love the color. I love that it's Angora. It's very cozy and fluffy and a lot of great qualities. But um, where do I begin? This was a hot mess. So I love the pattern. The pattern, generally you see people knit this doing some sort of like fade effect with a mohair held with a fingering. And I've seen several beautiful finished objects of this pattern in a solid such as this. I really like those for a change and was attracted to the concept of that and had wanted to knit this pattern. I knit the spring version of it as a tee in cotton last summer and really enjoyed knitting the pattern, wearing the pattern, but um, so I thought I would change it up by doing the solid in this yarn. First and foremost, I struggled with gauge on this. I'm a loose knitter generally and just struggled and struggled. Finally, I kind of got where I thought would work and cast on and was going. And I don't know if it was the, um, the stitch itself or um, while I was knitting the yoke, I was not feeling very well health-wise and I feel like that might have translated into my stitches. Um, I don't know. I won't get into that because it's just irrelevant but um, to be honest I'm not happy with and I think the angora is making my nose itch. Um, I'm not that happy with the gauge the overall finish of my stitches in the yoke. Now I'm really itching now that I'm talking about it. Um, so my friend Gwen, who is like a stitching phenom, she is so knowledgeable and experienced and inspiring. Oh, now my nose is really itching. So Gwen, who I went shopping with and I mentioned earlier, she has knitting machines and she was like, Jamie, once I knit a yoke, I generally, instead of knitting it in the round, I will then knit front, back and sleeves on the knitting machine. Oh, geez, my nose. And then seam them up. So you knock out a sweater really fast. She's like, Jamie, you should get a knitting machine. You could knit swatches of your yarn for fiber shows and whatnot. It's amazing. So together, to make a long story short, we talked about um, 
what knitting machine might be best for a newbie knitting machine user. I don't know what the term, machine knitter, there you go. And I found one on eBay and generally like, um, I'm sure they're selling for brand new somewhere, but I just don't have any knowledge as to that. But anyway, you can find one on eBay for generally $250 to $500, but I found one that was essentially like new in box from the 80s for like $150 with shipping. I kind of like made an offer and got it down to something I think even less than that. And so I got it. I played around with it. I have it over here on this side of the room and really struggled. And again, I think that speaks to me just not feeling well around that time. And Gwen ended up coming over, giving me some lessons. Then I thought I was on a roll with some practice yarn, albeit. And then things were going good. And then they weren't. And that was when I had put the stitches from the yoke onto the knitting machine to um, knit. So a knitting machine generally, like a basic one and basic technique, will do stockinette. You just run the um, carriage that is loaded with the yarn back and forth. So things were going okay until they weren't. I don't know what happened. I was struggling. Welcome to welcome my dog Jack to the video. Um, hi Jack, you want to talk about your sweater knitting? Yes, you're a good boy. Um, they weren't going well, so I called Gwen. She came over. She got me back on track. Things were going fine. We finished the sleeves together. Um. And then all I had was one side of the body. Well, that just, uh, just wasn't going well. It just was like a real struggle. I think part of it was the yarn. The yarn is, as it's Angora, it's um, sensitive to the tension. And unless you're really experienced with the knitting machine, you're trying to maintain tension and learn just how to operate it. And I think I should have probably gone longer using like a hardier scrap yarn kind of thing, practice yarn to get my skills down before working with a sensitive yarn such as this. So to make a long story short, it was just um, a very tedious project. So once all the parts were knit flat on the machine, body and sleeves, I joined them in the round and did um, a little bit of ribbing, which you can see. Then I seamed it up. Actually, um, I'll tell you a secret. I put, I seamed it by using my sewing machine. Um, through this, so when I first started knitting, I had never seen a sweater knit in the round. I think a lot of, um, sorry, that's my dog chewing a bone, Jack. Um, a lot of old school patterns are knit flat and seamed, but I think the new trend is mostly seamless. I prefer seamless because I don't like purling. And, um... When I sat down to seam this, I looked at how many stitches were, you know, running here. And I just thought, oh, I can't do it. Let's try the sewing machine. And it worked out fine as far as like the stitch quality and whatnot and the finished um, structure of the sweater. But it has taught me, because it's been ages since I've knit a sweater flat. It, I don't like, I know a lot of designers say, that having a seam adds structure and purpose to maybe how you want the garment to lay. But I think what I've learned is that on my body, I like seamless sweaters best. Um, and then also too, I could have knit the sleeves a little bit longer. This is not my favorite project. 
I don't think the I don't think I necessarily love the solid color with the pattern. Now that I've kind of seen mine and some fade ones, I really think I prefer the fades. Uh, I like other people's solids, just not this. I don't know. I think the darkness loses the um, the detail of these dip stitches, they're called. And um, I think the sleeve length and the seam situation just isn't my favorite. So I can't say that this is my favorite make from my repertoire. But nonetheless, it's off the needles. The yarn was um, super cheap. I used almost all 10 balls. And yeah, moving on. I've got plenty of other projects and um, am just, you know, I will continue to hone my skills on the knitting machine and see what I can do to practice my skills before trying to, you know, knit a sweater on a machine again. All that to say, I do love the pattern. I think it's really well written and would encourage you to make it. Whether you like the solid situation or the fade, it's fun. The dip stitches are not intimidating. Once you like sit down and spend five minutes reading the pattern, you will get it. You will be able to do it. I encourage you. And that's it. Not every finished object is going to be the world's most successful. That's just me being honest. Anyway, back to the other projects. Thanks for joining me here at M1 Yarns and the Michigan Makers Podcast. Uh, please consider subscribing, hitting the bell for notifications when I drop a new video, which tends to be about every week or two. And happy knitting, happy crocheting, happy machine knitting, which if you'd like to talk about that more, if you if you do have a, a knitting machine, if you have experience, if you have thoughts, if you'd like more information, please drop a comment below and maybe I'll do another video. I'll do a demonstration. I'll get Gwen to do a little demonstration. Gwen is just full of knowledge and she's a great teacher, very patient, and I appreciate her encouragement on this. And that's all I've got for you today. Have a great day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.